Thank you very much, Andrew. I think that uh, what we're seeing here at COP21 is a lot of potential for successful agreement. And part of the reason we have that is we've moved beyond some of the previous discussions in climate, which were very much focused just around countries and nations and what they can do, to actually bring in some of the voices of business, of sub-regional governments, whether it's states or cities, of civil society. And this is showing that this is a more collective action. From countries, we have a much broader base of those who are taking action and committing to take action. We have over 180 countries that have come forward with their intended nationally determined contributions, so what they are committing to do. But we also have cities. We have a number of cities who have now signed up to the Compact of Mayors, over 300 cities. We have business, a strong voice from business and from investors who are committing themselves to take action, to go towards decarbonization or zero emissions in their business work, to go towards clear reporting on um, the investments that are associated with carbon related related carbon emitting uh, sectors. So we've really had a shift in who's participating, who's acting, and that this is more a, a global effort to work all together towards a solution. There's still a lot that needs to be done, but it's in a very good place. Um, I, I think in terms of the potential success here, what we're really looking for in terms of an agreement and hope to get is a number of things. We've already got the um, INDCs from countries on the table. We need a very clear long-term goal of where we need to get to for decarbonization in the future. This is a strong signal to businesses, to investors, to consumers on where we're going to be going, the direction of travel and how to do that. So that's one. A second thing we need is we know that while a lot of the INDCs are ambitious, we've got a lot coming forward, they're not enough. We are not going to be able to get on a pathway consistent with keeping global warming below two degrees Celsius through these alone. So we need a mechanism to be able to come back again in five years time by 2020 for countries to review progress to see how much with further innovation, with further developments, the, the costs of action have come down, how much easier it is building on that to then make further commitments. So we need to be able to come back to assess progress and to ratchet up ambition. So that is needed in order to get to two degrees. And the third thing that's absolutely essential is to ensure that there is the finance, there is the support in order to help developing countries make this transition. Many of the developing countries have come forward with strong INDCs. They have a lot of ambition in them. We need to be able to support that, ensure that that transition can happen. Um, yes, one of the things that is being discussed heavily here is this idea of a mechanism to come back in five years to review progress and to ratchet up ambition. It's absolutely essential. We need it in order to get on a pathway consistent with two degrees. But beyond that, it makes good economic sense. If we look back five years or ten years, um, we would never have predicted the amount of renewables that we have now in the system. Last year was the first year ever that we had more renewable capacity built globally than fossil fuel capacity. And that happened because in within four years, the costs of solar PV came down 90%. We've had huge developments in terms of wind. But five, 10 years ago, we couldn't have predicted that. So we can't predict today how much easier, how much cheaper it'll be to get climate action in five years or in 10 years. So we need countries to be able to come back, to review the progress, to look at the new technological developments, and to actually make new commitments based on that. I hope everyone leaves this climate conference, both here inside the rooms, but also the world outside, with a clear vision that we are on a pathway to decarbonize the economy. We can do it. We can do it in a way that makes economic sense, that contributes to development, to equity everywhere, and to growth, strong, inclusive growth. We can do that and have climate action together. One of the major challenges out there is that countries around the world are still subsidizing fossil fuels, the fossil fuel use, production, and exploration. That is something that can't continue. If we're trying to move away uh, from these, if we're trying to move towards a low carbon economy, we've got to stop the subsidies. Today, they amount to about $650 billion per year for fossil fuel subsidies. It's far too much, and it's sending us in the wrong direction.